Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial on GCSE Biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of hormonal control in humans, and in particular on the human endocrine system. I'm Shumana from StudyMind, where we help you revise GCSE Biology with our helpful video tutorials, tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button. Whilst you are watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything, and let us know if it's your first time watching our videos so we can send you our free revision materials. We also have helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you through the specification. So let's get started. Hello all, and welcome to this tutorial on the human endocrine system. So, in today's tutorial, we're, we're going to be having a look at the concept of homeostasis and how this involves negative feedback. And we're then going to apply this to the endocrine and nervous systems. And a really good example of this is illustrated by the pituitary gland. So, first of all, let's have a look at what negative feedback actually is. So it forms a key part of homeostasis. And remember, homeostasis is the maintenance of a con constant internal environment in your body. So negative feedback is the way in which homeostasis is maintained. So when you have a change in your body's internal environment, this change has to be detected by receptors in order for us, for our body, to then return this change back to the set point. So there's always a set point, whether you're talking about temperature or pH or blood glucose, there's always an optimum level um, of that measurement. So we call this the set point. And if our body deviates from that set point, then we're going to have this detected by this change detected by receptors, and then we're going to initiate an effective response that will drive our body's environment back towards that set point. So your body always counteracts this change. So here we go. So we have a stimulus, and so this could be low blood glucose, for example. This is detected by receptors which is fed back to a control centre, which then drives an effective response to increase your blood glucose levels back to the set point. So let's look at an example of this. So body temperature falls, for example, so it falls below the optimum, which is 37 degrees. So we can say the set point would be normal body temperature of 37 degrees. Your body temperature has fallen below that, so your thermoreceptors are going to sense this. And remember, they're found peripherally in the skin, um, for example, and also centrally in the thermoregulatory centre in the hypothalamus. And so your thermoreceptors are going to detect this, and your thermoregulatory centre is going to be activated. And this is going to cause effector mechanisms in order to increase your body temperature back towards the 37 degrees Celsius set point. So as we saw in the last tutorial, this could include hair erector, pili muscles contracting and hair standing on end, and therefore this is going to trap more insulating heat close to the skin and therefore allow our body temperature to increase. But we've also seen other examples of, way, of ways in which our body might increase its body temperature. So for example, shivering is a really good mechanism of doing that by generating heat energy. Um, so yeah, this is a really good example of negative feedback. We have a deviation from the set point and we have an effector mechanism driving our change back towards the normal set point. And let's look at a further example of this in the endocrine system. So that was a nervous system example of negative feedback. So in the endocrine system, we're looking at ADH, which stands for anti-diuretic hormone. which we'll be looking more at in a subsequent tutorial. See, diuretic hormone. So water levels rise in the blood, your osmoreceptors activated, detecting this rise in water levels. You're then going to get your osmoregulatory centre activated, and this is going to cause less ADH to be released by the pituitary gland. And remember, ADH is antidiuretic hormone, so that means it would cause um, retention of urine in the body. Um, but here we're getting less of it released, so we're going to get more urine produced, and therefore we're going to get our water levels decreasing because of this urine production. So this is another example of negative feedback. We have a deviation from our set point of the normal water level, and we're getting the production of more urine via less ADH being produced. 
therefore causing the water levels to decrease back to normal. So the endocrine system works with the nervous system to maintain homeostasis, so there's a lot of crosstalk between the two systems. They're not exclusive. So the endocrine system uses hormones, so endocrine in general means hormones, and hormones are always secreted into the bloodstream from the glands that, that make them, and they, they then move through the blood to reach their target organ. So they don't have a very specific way of acting on their target organ, whereas nerves kind of directly go towards the target organ, and we say they innovate the target organ, Hormones, they travel in the bloodstream and they can affect multiple organs at the same time, not just their target organ. And the endocrine system also works by negative feedback. So let's just compare the two systems, the endocrine and the nervous system. So we've seen a similar table before. So the nervous system initiates short-term responses, whereas the hormonal system tends to have more longer-lasting responses. And the nervous system is a very fast response with nerve impulses travelling extremely fast, whereas the hormonal system requires production and release of the hormone, circulation in the blood, and then it's got to find its target organ, and then a response has to be initiated. So it's going to be a much slower response than your nervous system response. And we've already said that the hormonal system secretes chemical messengers called hormones into the blood from the gland, and um, nervous system uses electrical impulses that travel via neurons. Um, in the previous slide, I mentioned that the nervous system targets a specific region, so a particular muscle might be innervated by a particular neuron. So any impulse that travels down that neuron will target that particular muscle, whereas the hormonal system tends to target the body as a whole because um, your messengers are travelling in your blood. And also many, many cells have the same receptor for that particular messenger, so there might be multiple effects on the body. And the hormonal system is always involuntary, we can't control it, whereas the nervous system can be either or. So you can have voluntary movements by the nervous system, as when you might sprint, for example, in a 100 metre race, and you can have involuntary movements in a reflex um, arc, for example, if we, as we've seen in the previous tutorials on the nervous system. And if you're unsure about any of that, do go back and watch the tutorials on the nervous system, as I think that will help you. It does form the kind of basic concepts that will then allow you to understand the endocrine system. So now we're looking at the functions of pituitary gland. So the pituitary gland exists as a structure in the brain and it controls blood sugar, fertility, water levels and growth. And it does this by secreting primary hormones that cause target organs to then secrete secondary hormones. So all this means is that the pituitary is secreting a hormone which is then triggering a subsequent organ to then secrete a different hormone. So the hormones secreted by the pituitary gland include ACTH, which is adrenocorticotropic hormone, and this stimulates the adrenal glands, leading to release of adrenaline. And this is really important because adrenaline is, for example, released during exercise and it causes an increase in the heart rate. So it's a good way of remembering this. If you remember, it stands for adrenocorticotrophic hormone. It's going to be stimulating the adrenal glands. And ADH is antidiuretic hormone, which we've talked about already, and it stimulates the kidneys to control water levels in the blood. So when you have too much water in your blood, you're going to get less ADH released, because if you think about it, when you have too much water, so too much water, we want to decrease water, which means we want to produce urine. And in order to produce urine, we're going to have to decrease antidiuretic hormone because we want diuresis. We, and diuresis means production of urine, so we want less antidiuresis, we want more diuresis. So that's the way that I remember it. So too much water in the blood, we're going to get decreased levels of ADH, and therefore we're going to retain, we're going to lose more water because we want to decrease the water levels in our blood. So the pituitary gland is located just below the hypothalamus in the brain. So people often get very confused about where the pituitary gland is because it's affecting organs that are very much further away from the brain than you would expect. So they, it affects the kidney, for example, and that's way down here somewhere. So the pituitary gland is indeed in the brain and it's found just below the hypothalamus, which we saw contains the 
the thermoregulatory centre in a previous tutorial, but also contains many other centres. And you can see it just here. So this is the structure of your pituitary gland. You have an anterior pituitary, which means a front pituitary, and a back pituitary, the posterior pituitary. And above that we have the hypothalamus. So it sits snugly below the hypothalamus. And your exam board also requires you to know where various endocrine glands are located in the body. Don't worry if these are new to you, we're going to be looking at them in subsequent tutorials. But just to recap, the pituitary gland is found in the brain, the thyroid gland is found in your neck, the adrenal glands are found above the kidney. So a really good way of remembering this is renal, means kidney, it's the medical term for kidney, and ad means um, above, so above the kidneys you find the adrenal gland. And then you have your pancreas and your ovary and your testes. So this is something that you will have to commit to memory because they could give you a diagram and ask you to label particular glands on, so do go back through this and we will be going through these individual organs and talking about their functions as well in a subsequent tutorial. So well done for today and I shall see you for the next tutorial. Thanks for watching this free video from Study Mind. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to catch our newest videos by clicking below and leave a comment on a topic you'd like a video on. Click here to watch more videos in our series for GCSE Biology or visit our website studymind.co.uk for free past paper compilations by topic and specification.